Yeah, and it's one of Jing's most played heroes as well, looking at his record. So he's played it quite a few times. He's had a lot of success with it. And you've already got combinations anyway with Bane Kunkka. You've got X Arrow, you've got Nightmare Arrow. Leads a really good time. SMG do have some save with Shadow Demon. So they, they have some way of breaking off that combination. And of course, for SMGs, and they can also stack up early, build up for Chidori to clear out. I believe Chidori's best heroes are like Luna Clinks, if I'm recalling that run from Dream Maker well. It, it's those two heroes. We'll see if SMG will be able to pick that up oh, and able it right. for the Shadow Demon and farm up. Yeah, it was Chidori, right? With the. What was it? Gleipnir yeah, Bloodborne Gleipnir... build up. Yeah, that was the... him. That was when Clinks first had that change. Yep. And I was calling it complete trash as a change. And everyone was, all the <laughs> pros kept playing it, trying to figure out yep. what the what the best build was. And it turns out it wasn't completely trash. It turns out it was pretty good. Speaking of something that I think is trash right now, John Lycan comes up for OB Neon. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I said that a few days ago and I was proven wrong once again. So Lycan here, do you like it, John? Do you think Lycan's a good pickup for OB Neon? I think it is. It gives him some tower push. It gives him some strong laning presence. That's very hard to zone out. SMG's hold for a Lycan isn't particularly great. I mean, you did pick Lycan into Grimstroke. So Soulbind is definitely going to hold you back there as you will not be able to move at, you know, uncapped move speed in your wolf form. But considering the lane up against Spirit Breaker, it's pretty darn good. You're, you're not going to be under pressure up against the Spirit Breaker off lane. Melee hero matchup, he might be able to run up and bash you, play with the Inkswell, but Lycan's pretty tanky and you can always sit back and use your wolves instead. Grimstroke can wave clear, but he will you know, have to make that choice. Do I prioritize the Inkswell for ganks or do I go for the Stroke of Fate to clear out the wolves and you're likely to lean towards Inkswell. So I think there is room for the Lycan to just breathe here. You've already got the Bane to kind of help you trade hits as well and put his body forward and it's hard to win trades with a Bane with a Brain Sap. So Neon are covering their bases, but SMG's lineup is still something to watch out for. We've seen Raging Potato Spirit Breaker a lot, Mike. We've seen this combination with Grimstroke. Even against this lane, it, it can still do a lot of damage. Funny thing is, I mean, we, we have seen a lot of uh, Raging Potato Spirit Breaker, John, but if I'm completely honest, I feel like it just kept losing. Mind you, that was with the, the Morphling SB combo, so yep. maybe the Morphling had something to do with it, but... I don't know, every time we see this SB pop out for SMG, I, I feel like I get a little bit concerned about this team. We'll see what position one they go for. I mean, Morphling is banned to be fair, so they won't have that option available to them. Fortunately for SMG, it's the final <laughs> pickup now. Mm. Speaking of Morph, by the way, John. Yeah? Does it get a buff in the next patch? Why? Why not, John? No. It's not very good. Eh... I'd rather not. I, I don't want. I don't like dealing with Morphling as support. I remember the first time. Remember when he got the rework to his ult? The first time that came out, I was playing a lion, and a Morphling turned into me and just killed me. And I was, I was very upset with Morphling since that time. That was a long time ago now, mind you. But that memory still rings to mind. I would not want that hero alive in any way. The only way I will accept any buffs to these heroes I hate is if I can kill myself as Pudge. If I can Soul Ring. <laughs> Rot deny myself and say I'm making plays. And that's the only time I'm happy, Mike. And until that point, I'm not going to be happy. So well, that's that's my condition. Or if you buff CM's move speed, you know, make, her, <laughs> make her as fast as the wolves of Ice Rack. That, those are my conditions there, Mike. Oh, good luck to you, Jonathan. I, I don't think either <laughs> of those things are happening. So V Neil, final pickup oh. now. They do appear to need someone maybe in the mid lane. I mean, you, you could throw the Kunker mid. Lycan safe, but Lycan could also go off, and now there's a Bloodseeker in the game, which I, I suppose does relatively well against the SB, against the Quap, and against the PA. John, I can tell you've got something to say to us. What is it? I just, I'm just, you know, you and I, we've seen the Bloodseeker a lot, and it just doesn't feel great. I, I think it, for Neon's lineup, it does work out well, because you've got Nightmare to set up, you've got X pullback, and to Torrent Boat, so you're not completely reliant on just getting this silence off. Chuan is playing? That's a Chuan Bloodseeker? It is. They didn't get CY. Oh. I, all this time I thought CY. Chuan is playing? Never mind. All right. <laughs> Chuan Bloodseeker. I take it back. This 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 is going to work out well. They've got the X, X Torrent Boat combination. It's not the best lane for a PA to play with. You can still stand back and dagger, but you can be really aggressive here on Neon with Marana if they get a good angle for the arrow into Blood Right. So there's a lot to play with for Neon. I can't believe we're casting Chuan, Mike. This is... Yeah. That, 
I, I'm just in shock because I, I expected someone else entirely, but it's Chuan. I mean, he is in the team house, so this makes sense. Put in your big TI Winan coach as a player. Let's get it done. I mean, why the hell not? Obviously, we got the wrong information. We'll have to talk to some people in the background, see where that came from. But good to see you did your uh, your uh, your double checking, John, your research to make sure we had the right plays in the in the lobby. But still, I mean, Chuan is here. That's very exciting, and it might incite some confidence in some people for OB Neon. Though what would incite confidence in me, Jonathan, if you told me that one mm. team had a better draft, and I'd like you to, to go down that route if you could. I think it's really even, and these drafts have a lot of ways to play around each other. When it comes down to clashes, it does feel like Neon might have a better time. Like, there is a lack of AoE control from both sides, but Neon has the X arrow and the Nightmare arrow. They've got the Blood Rite to follow up on the boat, on the torrent. So I think when it comes down to bigger engages, Neon does have... A lineup that plays better in that so i think that's something smg will have to watch out for they're reliant on getting a good charge and inkswell combo they do have that save on the disruption but there's a lot of catch from neon so i don't think you're going to be able to save every single time here on that pain all right we'll get into a game number one underway now between these two teams i haven't asked you yet today so i think we've got a bit of time nice. if there's one hero just one that you could have nerfed to the ground, like completely destroyed by Ice Frog, who would it be? And why? You're thinking about it now, I'm not even sure. I... What? OD. I think OD very clearly needs something done. I don't know what, as you pointed out, because you can't nerf Meteor Hammer because it's already kind of bad. But I, w I want that gameplay style changed. So it's not necessarily nerfs, just a rework. What here does need a nerf? I mean, I was ranting about Spirit Breaker before, but it is, you know, to be to be honest, it is fun. So yeah, I wouldn't really want that nerfed. Tinker, How about you, Mike? Uh, Tinker. I, Tinker? Destroy I mean, him. Kill him. Uh, that's fair. Maybe I'm kind of biased against that because I've, I've been winning with a Tinker player on my stack. Oh, so. John. <laughs> I'm, not being, I'm not the one being Tinkered. They are, and that's fine. With I'm going to have to really <laughs> reconsider my friendship with you, Jonathan. Uh, uh, that, that is the first time I'm hearing of this. I might have to check out my friends list. I, I did need an extra slot the other day, so see if we can free one slot up. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, goodness. Do you have no shame, John, accepting that MMR with a Tinker player? <laughs> hey, we're playing unranked, all right? So it, it's oh. not doing anything for my rank. So it's even it's sad. Fun. All for fun. It's yeah, it's sad. For fun. I... Yeah, you do start with two bounties here for Neon. Ninja Bogey does deny one, but SMG don't get to pick it up. So it's an advantageous start for a Neon already, as we will see the lanes break out here, Mike. And Ryu on the off lane Lycan with Jing on the Mirana. So Lycan Mirana lane, it's not the most synergetic. You don't have arrows set up. You will likely just be kind of playing this slow here on Jing, arrowing large camp when you can, looking for the range creep, getting some farm up that way. They are going to be up against Ninja Boogie and Chidori, or CDR, on that safe lane. And this is also pretty passive for PA Shadow Demon. You could be pretty aggressive on the SD once you have the Shadow Poison up. But beyond that, more than likely, CDR is just going to focus on those last hits and just look to farm but to get what he can from the lane, play with a dagger if he is shoved out, but... With this lineup, I don't, I don't really see too many angles for them to shove that PA out of here. Yeah, certainly not. Of course, over in the mid lane, you've got Avatar mode against Moon. It's, uh, Avatar, is, does he have another name or is it Avatar mode? I can't tell. Yes, yes, it's, it's actually Avatar mode. Okay, thank you. Yes. That's Avatar mode against Moon. Moon's copying a fair bit of damage here, though he is against the Conqueror to be fair. Uh, Avatar mode right now, though, having a great laning stage and... I haven't had the pleasure, I don't think, of casting this man before in the mid lane, so it's going to be a bit of a new experience for me here, John. Yeah, I think Neon's come out with these players that haven't gotten much regional exposure. Again, possibly locally, Jinx, a very familiar name to me, but Avatar mode is out of blue, and he's holding this lane well. To be fair, it's Kunkka against Quap. Kunkka plays really well in this lane, just play around with Tidebringer. Sure, Quap can come in with Scream of Pain and the Dagger. Shadow Strike at level 2 here for Moon. It doesn't really stop a Kunkka from farming. They have managed to block his small camp, and that is under vision, so Avatar Mode should know he doesn't have that flash farm potential while the lane's shoved in or shoved out. But he's still having a great time, really just needs to get rune control going his way. Bottle is coming true. And Moon, because he doesn't opt for Blink, as we tend to see most mid laners kind of going for this 2-0-1, he's 
still gonna find it, but the six minute rune, the four minute rune is gonna be under a bit more contestion, especially when you consider you're up against a Marana. If Jin can find that time to rotate, that could be a very nice kill coming out for Neon down mid. I have a look at that last lane as well. Top lane, you've got a Beng there against Afu and Raging Potato, and of course, a Beng will be supporting Chuan on that Bloodseeker. Something you love to see, John. Back in that pause one roll here on the BS. Pause one Bloodseeker certainly doesn't make me feel very confident, let me tell you, John. But mid lane, Avatar mode, he's making me feel confident right now as Moon is going to drop very low, but it will not go down. He will survive another day, but it was a very close call for the Quap. And you're just seeing how strong can, can, can come out in that lane matchup. A slight CS lead coming out there for Avatar mode. Some denies on Moon, not the biggest. Avatar mode will have to watch himself here, though. Drops him fairly low. Does he the fairy fire? Might still... No, he's going to be fine. He'll just XTP away. The one bottle charge was enough to keep him safe. But Moon is going to be able to take that time to just take over the lane and try to get a big, bit of an XP advantage if he can. Uh, he will be back soon enough though not too long away from this uh this mid lane and still just really trying to harass moon out moon though obviously a bit of a veteran in the mid lane not going to be harassed out that easily yeah he does manage to get that range creep deny so just some big denies coming out up against avatar mode slowing down the pace and kind of evening out the matchup just that little play gave moon the slight cs lead but with the denies he has on hand you definitely feel a lot better there the side of smg Finding most of what they want from their lanes. Chidori again not held back here in the bot lane. Uh, you've got a pretty decent time coming out from Ninja uh, Raging Potato, although he's not really stopping Chuan. But he is still getting the EXP you want on that Spirit Breaker and the threat of charge. And Inkswell is still there. Afu is just about to hit level 3 once that's up. And that's the point when you start to get a bit scared. There is the Nightmare save from Ah Bing down the line, but it, whether or not you spot that Spirit Breaker in time is a different question. Absolutely. It's not easy. Raging. Having a, a decent time here against Chuan. Charge is going to be there. There's the Inkswell out as well, though. A Beng going to try and go for a Nightmare and does get it very nicely as they turn. A Beng, though, is dropping with the Bash out. They'll have plenty of control, but do they have the damage? It does seem like they do. Ah, Fu able to pick up First Blood here against OB Neon. That'll leave Chuan alone here as they might even get, keep chasing him down. In the meantime, though, Avatar mode does get a kill onto Moon. Looks like Jing was there to assist, however. Top lane. That's the rotation we're talking about. Chuan, he does eventually go down as they do and eventually just charge him down. A Bang trying to come in and help out, but he, he was just a bit too late to the party. Yeah, no regen on hand as well for a Bang. He does have that one salve, so we'll have something to play with but you're seeing some pretty nice wins coming out from smg and neon i think that mid kills moon. really tell me they're doing again oh that's a great arrow from jing ninja boogie gonna try and save moon's life but it's not gonna be enough avatar mode having a bit of a laugh to himself as he does pick up his second kill of the game in the meantime though a bang does drop top but raging is gonna be chased down by chuan it does give a kill back the way of the blood seeker overall that's a, a great trade across the map for ob neon yeah, they, they managed to make it work on Neon's end. We're still seeing that snowball effect coming through for Avatar mode. And it's just the power of that Marana rotation. When you've got the Kunkka, Radiant's when you've got the X set up, the arrows are very easy to land. Jinx's been managing to work those angles really well. And it's just a comfort hero they have on Neon that's worked out for Jing. And on the times I've seen him, I think, in the Predator Community Cups, this is a hero he played a lot of. And it's sh showing up well. SMG... I mean, they're not too far behind. They're still finding that free farm they want on CDR. So all things considered, your PA is still off to a good start. You just kind of have to cut your losses elsewhere. But if you can stall out for the Battle Fury timing, you've still got your win condition set to escalate. A 3-3 three three for now. Very slight net worth lead for OB Neon. And I saw Ninja Boogie with a bit of a rotation mid. I think going to cut him off here on this Bane. But well, they might be able to set up for a nice arrow. In fact, Jing is here. Jing... You talked about his Marana, John. He is already having a fantastic game. Setting up three kills for his team. Three assists on that Potom. And he's just at the right place at the right time. Every single time so, so far. Just finding all the angles he needs to. Even the CDR has to be a bit cautious here. Nice juke out there from Chidori. He's going to be okay. 
Jinx still going to have a look around though, and a Beng is going to go right past that T1 tower. They want to go for the dive and force these rotations out. CDR, he might be forced to try and fight back. In fact, Jing is the one to be jumped, but the blink strike was already there, and now the Nightmare of Peng ends up nightmaring himself and needs to get the hell out of there. They do, however, force two more rotations. And that may be worth it enough for OB Neo. Just getting those supports to, to be forced down bot. Yeah, and you break off the Spirit Breaker combination with the Grimstroke having to show up. So you're a lot safer here if you want to keep farming top lane, working towards that Maelstrom. And, you know, they're not committing for mid. So Moon's going to be able to get some breeding room. Maybe get some control over the 8th minute rune, which is also really important for the pop. They've been losing out in this trade so far. A charge coming out onto Avatar mode. A bit far forward, no real follow-up control. Raging does stop. Heroes are around though. They'll throw the remnant out. Disruption there, but it's just not the position you really want to jump this Kunkka in. And props to Avatar mode. I mean, even with the, the small camp that was blocked, John, he is well and truly ahead of net worth. I mean, he is 1.1k ahead of Moon on this Queen of Pain. He's just completely demolishing them at the moment. Yeah, he's, ha he's had a swell time. The lane matchup just works out for the Konka in most cases, as we've seen over and over again. And his aggression's been really good. He's been calling his supports mid. He's making this rotation bot. No wards to spot this from SMG, but they should have seen that from the ramp ward. So, should be able to get themselves in a safe spot in time. CDR not going to work that wave, so a little bit of time wasted, but this is still space coming out to both sides. And Chuan is getting more farm. Uh, Raging can't really stop that by himself. You might argue, sure, Spirit Breaker is farming too, but he doesn't clear out camps or creep waves as fast. And that's going to lead to a very nice timing on the Maelstrom for Chuan and should lead to some early presence from the Bloodseeker down the line as well. Moon just going to keep that push up in the mid lane though, and a bang while he is around to try and defend, it's... There's not really much he can do as the Bane. He's at least going to posture aggressively and that will force Moon to walk away. And SMG just kind of interested in just securing their own farm for now, but you do get slightly concerned here for him. I mean, you are still against this Lycan and if that Helm of the Overlord timing comes in at a, at a nice time, Enryu's just going to be able to take over. Well, we've seen it before, just with that Ancient Creep that you do manage to dominate. It's just so much more damage in the middle of these team fights, and even just the aura sometimes is, is more than enough. It's just a lot, and the wave clear of SMG. You have someone to co-op, you definitely have it mainly on your Grimstroke for the supports, but it's still tough once you're clumped up. And you are relying on your Shadow Demon to kind of save you from that spot, and the Soulbind as well to stop that run, but sometimes the Lycan just doesn't stick by his teammates. They are pressuring that mid-tier one now, just with the old Dominator up and running on our Lycan Enryu, and that's going to be another tower. They took bot tier one with no contestion. They can't afford to lose mid here on SMG. Nightmare into the X Torrent from Avatar mode, and the Wolf Form has already been popped as well as they are chasing down Ninja Boogie. They do get a nice disruption off with the Soul Bind, but it's not going to matter for Ninja. He is going to drop as OB Neon now want a bit more, and they do get the Rupture onto Raging Potato into the Blood Right. It doesn't connect, but they've got the X pack into the boat now. And Raging Potato, well, they're going to try and help him out the best they can with the Ink Swarm, but it's probably not going to be enough as the Starfall does come through. And even Enryu just diving the Tier 3 towers, getting another kill as he just TPs right out <laughs> in front of Chidori. And two crits there for CDR, but just no damage. No, he's not at the point where he's, he's really doing much. No Battle Fury up yet. Still three parts away. Well, two parts considering he has the gold for the Manor Void Stone. So still a ways off until your PA is online. Your Quap can kind of make plays at this position. Moon is just working onto his Sanj. Uh, probably Kaya afterwards. Typical build up for the Quap. But Obi Neon are in a very comfy spot. With that mid tier one gone, their triangle is a lot more secure. We're seeing Avatar Mode just clear out some great stacks. And while all that happened, you've been farming on Chuan. He shows up, he just drops a blood right, gets a good use for rupture of Maelstrom, almost done. So his presence, this early game, early to mid game spike for Neon is set to go. SMG will try to contest with the smoke though. Oh, a bit of a pause out here. Avatar, he'll be the one to pause and he could be the target of this smoke. Doesn't have the boat up for another 14 seconds, so... If he does get caught, he won't have that insurance with the boat run. 
So we'll see where SMG do end up as they run right through the triangle, but not going to find anyone there quite yet. Instead, back down to the bot lane is where they go as Chuan is going to try and rump shot, but he's been double bashed up into the inkswell of Moon. He is still alive, however, but eventually he's going to drop, but now the rotations are there. OB Neon, they're going to try and force a bit of a fight here. It's Arfu at the very least, but even he's running away. Arfu? Well, he's going to be chased by these units, but with the smoke out, he's going to be just fine. OB Neon still having a look around for another target. There's Ninja Boogie. Disruption is there into a great charge out from Raging Potato, but the Sonic Wave, it's off the mark. Boat does connect onto Ninja Boogie. Meanwhile, CDR showing up. Henry, you in trouble. He'll go for the Wolf Form with the Soul Bite. Gonna lock them down as Avatar Mode, just holding his teammate with him. So they go for more now. Onto Avatar, but here comes Chuan. Back into the team fight. Onto the Spirit Breaker they go. They'll land that X Current, and that should be enough. Avatar. Able to pick up his fifth kill of the game as they even want oh, CDR and what an arrow Jing. out. Jing right on target. You Giving the tip over side. is from Chuan. As they'll even find the PA it seems. A bang, he'll be the one to take it himself. Oh man, you know you're doing good when your coach tips you, Mike. Jing just <laughs> been on a roll this game. And I have a fun fact. From yeah. OB Neon themselves, they've tweeted at us, Mike. Uh, Avatar mode is also known as... K-O-K-Z, if well, you could pronounce that without getting his flag, Mike. <laughs> yes, that, thank you, Obino. We, we, we appreciate the update. We're not going to... I, I, well, is that his real... I mean, I could say it if we really want to, but I'm sure the, the chat would enjoy that a bit too much if we just kept saying it. <laughs> I think we'll stick yep. to Avatar mode. Thank you for that, Obi Neon. <laughs> It, but Neon's been surprising. Like this new roster, I think, had more question marks than SMG's move with Ninja Bogey. And they're on the aggressive with a smoke. Might spot these TPs. Might be able to catch someone out here. Raging does break the smoke. CDR, however, kind of surrounded. Does allow the blink strike away, though, with Raging charging in. Enryu, he's been bashed up, but he's got the ink swell going as well. CDR, he'll jump back in. That'll be Enryu gone, but they've at least found our fools of trade. As now they chase for a little bit more. But who can they find? Oh, they've got the fiend grip onto the PA, but CDR, blink striking back up but never oh mind he'll be x right back into the blood right Chuan will turn around back towards the right side where ninja boogie is going to be caught and tp's into the pit lane where they want to even chase down moon but avatar mode not going to be able to catch him out though speaking of the devil john this man is still on top of the net worth board and still just dominating people 6-0-2 is the kunker yeah, and for Neon, before we'd associate the Kunkka with Mamang Daya, Avatar Mode had big shoes to fill. He's filling them well, Mike. He's just had a superb game so far. He, he controlled his lane well. He got great support rotations coming in from Jing. The synergy from Neon, it, it's like a team that's been playing together for at least six months. You know, it's like they've already worked through all of those growing pains that we tend to see new rosters do. And that's a promising sign for them. But SMG, they're not completely out. They're just waiting for that farm to come in. On CDR, they just need a bat butterfly up. They need to keep stalling. They need to keep some finding some pick key pickups. He's in trouble. Bloodright will be there. Moonlight Shadow even expended, but Raging is already charging to give the vision. They'll be able to find that pause one Bloodseeker. Another great kill here for SMG. Though it's starting to feel like the position one of OB Neon is probably just going to be Avatar mode at this point. Well, we've seen plenty of pause one Kunkka. Even from the mid lane, you can still just transition to that position one Kunkka. Pretty much, like there's nothing stopping Avatar Mode from just getting really big. He's going towards the Silver Edge buildup, so he's gonna have a crit. He's gonna have a good way of running around the map as well, getting some scouting out if need be. Down the line, you can expect AC. I think for this kind of buildup, you are looking for the Assault Curious, but you do have a Lycan who can build that himself. So there's kind of some trade way there. You could just have Lycan go AC, focus on Ags down the line here for Avatar Mode. Just have more controls, especially while BKBs aren't even a consideration yet. Raging. They are clumping down Bot. And the Nightmare is there, Bing, to set up into the Torrent and the boat and the arrow just in case. Raging even thought about getting away. Nice easy kill for OB Neon and well, they have that Helm of the Overlord, John, so it's going to be a very easy push into that tier 2 bottom tower. Radiant structure. Yeah. Doesn't take too long to get that done. Fortify is forced out early, but the next creep wave isn't too far off. Top is being shoved in by SMG, but their push isn't as fast. With a Quap, with a Shadow Demon, none of, their, none of their heroes really siege all too well. That's just going to allow Neon to keep finding the objectives they want here. That it is. 
And they are still trying to split push top lane to at least try to force the defense out, but it might be Neon. They might be forced into a fight instead. Charge is there. On to Avatar. Inkswell will be there to follow up and Noon looking to just blow him up. Might have the first death on Avatar. And they'll have it. They'll take the unstoppable kill streak away. And there's Jing. Slide a nice arrow onto the SP, but it's not going to lead to much. In the meantime, Enryu actually kills off Ninja Boogie and now raging. He'll go for another charge up. Moon's still chasing. They found Chuan on that Bloodseeker. Are they really going to commit? Yeah, they are. I think that T2 tower with the charge in from the SP is just so much damage for Chuan. Right. He's going to buy a bit more time as the rupture is there and he will just bleed out. Chuan, does he make it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, he, he he wanted that first. Yeah, he wanted to kill the creep. He was hoping for some good procs in the mail term. Didn't come out. Was punished for his greed. But you know, it's a neutral creep. He didn't die to the heroes. It's fine. He managed to set up for that kill on that deep dive, and they might find more on Neon Sand here, Mike. Yeah. Moon. This should right. be my oh, oh, it's right on target. Into the what? arrow from Jing, and now the boat. They do miss the tight bringer hit, but it may not matter as they've got the fiend grip, and that's going to be more than enough. Another kill for the Konka, another death for Moon, and it looks like this bottom tier two tower is back on the menu for Ob Neil. It should be open. I mean, they've still got the lichen, they've still got the granite golem there, so a lot of durability on the creep wave. They managed to deny her mid tier one. That was a very deep dive from SMG. You know what that was reminiscent of? That time where. SMG fully committed uh, on the opposite triangle with a tier 1 still standing, like they cut through that wave, just yeah. forced to fight in that area. They do it again, maybe just being overly aggressive. Neon, they've got the punishment. Find that tier 2 down mid though. Yeah, Jing charges there with the Ink Swall. It's going to be more than enough damage. Rupture though, Chuan going to try and turn back in on Raging, but fortunately they don't have enough teammates to really try and commit for this kill, so Raging Potato is going to be just fine. He had the Bulldoze going anyway. So the duration was very low on that rub shot. It's a hard one to really pin down, and without the follow-up, you are still free to run away from, to just stand still from the rupture. Nothing to force you into that position yet. I, you still find more on Neon Sand. It's basically a tier 2 trade away for your Mirana. Big win for Neon to keep control in the bot jungle, take the outpost, and maybe start setting up for Roshan. We are seeing Enryu. He is going to pick up the AC for the team here. So he's going to have that the he's going to be the aura carrier with the drums up and that should leave avatar mode free to go for something else after that silver edge again ags is pretty darn nice um shivas wouldn't be too bad or further damage wouldn't be too odd at all as they find Bang. yeah great nightmare again tumblr's toy to set up and well there's your torrent into the boat a great easy kill oh never mind disruption was there ninja boogie not gonna be able to buy enough time in fact now a charge up from raging He's going to be okay. But they... Wait, did Ninja Boogie get out too? Yeah, he did. Alright, so they didn't have a bash for him. They got the main target though, which is the Quap, and that'll mean they go right into the Roshan pit, and I don't think SMG have any way to try and stop this. No, they, without the Quap, it's going to be hard for them to jump in. They're just going to have to surrender the Roshan. They are playing from outside, often trying to make it tricky, but no one to follow up. That's going to be two lives up on Avatar mode. Now he's definitely going to be a big problem. If he doesn't use the boat in his first light, he will definitely have boat in his second. And that'll just drag out these games with the Granite Golem giving them more durability. With how tanky a Lycan is at this point, with how much damage Chuan can do in these prolonged fights, it's a, it's a risk for SMG at this point. It'll be a fight to break out now, SMG. Not realizing that they are occupying the triangle right now, OB Neon. In fact, mid lane, they'll spot out Ninja Boogie and they'll go right into a Fiend's Grip. I mean, I, I think they could have gotten away with the Nightmare into the uh, the arrow setup, but why not? Just make sure with the Fiend's Grip he does go down. That'll be the tier 2 tower to drop in the mid lane. SMG nowhere around to, to really try and defend this. They're just up at top instead. They're still trying to build up. I think they understand that Chidori is not in a position where he can fight yet. And they've got to secure that PA's farm. They don't have bot jungle because they lost that top bot tier 2 early on. 
Someone's got to help Chidori to get that catch up for him. Desolator's not too far off, Mike. The BKB's been up and running for a while. But Neon knows where they're playing. They go for a smoke play and they've got a good angle. Yeah, Bang can be charged up. Be a great way to start the fight. It's raging. Should be able to eventually get it done and does. However, in the meantime, Afu and CDR have been caught. CDR will oh. be X right back into the boat and he's just melting as Afu is not going to be able to make it out either. And they'll just keep going for more now. Ninja Boogie going to be shredded by Enryu. That's a 3 for 1 trade. The only kill SMG finds is that Bane and OB Neon. They'll just find another T1 it seems. Just keep pushing. Play to your lineup strength. You've got like and you've got the dominated creep. No need to stop on the objectives. Once they clear out the tier 1, tier 2 opens. Last outer tower left for SMG, shutting down even more spaces where the PA would want to play. It's becoming a really tough game for SMG to bounce back in. Just because your PA doesn't have enough farm oil. Has Raging gone too far? I think he may have as he charges onto Jing, but Jing's got help around. Enryu though does not have the lockdown, but Avatar mode does. Still, Shadow Blade is going to be there and that'll allow him to get out. It's a Raging Potato, high risk, high reward kind of play, but he'll get out just fine. Just won't be able to find the kill he wanted. Yep. By some time, that allows him to play in the bot jungle. We're seeing CDR, again, just keeping that farm game up, working towards the death. So they will have to do something about their tier 2, though. Yep. Nightmare is there. Raging Potato, again, trying to be a little bit cheeky, but the arrow does land without the bulldoze this time. And Well, now I'm going to say high risk, low reward, John, because I'm not sure what he was expecting out of that. <laughs> Space. He really is actually just trying to get space. You know, he's giving the room for Moon to work that top lane. He's giving the room for CDR to play the bot jungle, and just focusing in on the SB when he already has uh, Shadow Blade. Is you know you're kind of in a good position for your Spirit Break. You don't need too much more. Ideally, you would have your Ags, but at this point, you know a core has to be sacrificed. Might as well be Spirit Breaker and keep playing the stall game. And Neon being held back from taking the tier 2 because the creep wave has been de-pushed entirely for Moon, all from the space of Raging Potato. So I think, in a way like that, that was still worthwhile. It's space. It's a lot of good space. We'll go for a smoke now. SMG, that is. Right behind CDR. Avatar mode. Gonna be able to X himself back. So instead, they're gonna run right into a bing. He'll try to tumble his toy his way up, but... Well, actually, that might be enough. They're still charging. Surely they get him. And they will. It just took them a lot longer than I expected. And it seems like OB Neil want to try and fight. They'll go for a Moonlight Shadow out. Who are they going to find? Wolfform is there from Enryu. So he'll scout out for the team. They've already found our food, But he does get the Soulbind off in time. Ninja Boogie, meanwhile, just getting almost deleted by the Tidebringer Cleave. And Chuan's having to look for a bit more. He might get in range for CDR. But the blur is going to give enough for CDR to just walk back to the fountain. Instead, Moon, however, has been X'd up. No BKB available yet. Into the arrow again from Jing. That'll be a three for one. Just nothing going the way of SMG this game was. It's, it's just down to what we said in draft, Mike. With Neon's lineup, it's easier for them to take these bigger fights. It's easier for them to keep finding pickoffs. Raging has been found, Jing. Not going to land the arrow this time around, but they've got the X up. And eventually, Raging Potato will be back to Chuan. They don't really have a Roshan to play for, and that's because they're still holding on to that Aegis. But it will inspire now, and it seems like OB Neon do not care about the next Roshan. They want to go high ground. Just keep with a push. They know they've got that tempo. The high ground hold of SMG isn't particularly stellar. You only really have, what, Sonic Wave and Wide AoE beyond that. You're relying on some good soul binds and combinations thereafter. Maybe a good Inkswell charge out. CDR is not even bothering. He's just farming that top triangle while he can with a Deso up. And the push will eventually just come in from Neon. And it's just so hard to clear out the creep wave. The chip damage has been done. Tier 3 down to less than half. Roshan's still open, as you mentioned, Mike. And now I think SMG could start considering that possibility. Absolutely. SMD, SMG though, I mean CDR, have a look back, I, I guess he's almost on towards that BKB on that PA and once he's got that up, maybe they can actually force a fight with him, but even then, like, you, you get a little bit concerned about the Fiend's group of a Bing. The Bing has been really on point here in this Bane and just finding the right targets every time and 
Oh, even Tron's got an eye of Scotty up now on this Bloodseeker. I'm not quite as farmed as the PA, but nevertheless, he's not really the carry in this game. I mean, Avatar mode's that guy. Still just holding the Radiant Triangle. And SMG, all they can do is just keep avoiding. Just no way they can force a fight. Problem is, T2 top tower is just dropping slowly here from OB Neon. Just abusing that helm of the Overlord from Enryu. And it doesn't seem like SMG believe they can actually defend this. They will let it go down for free. But that's going to make it very hard to fight over the, ne the next Roshan. Yeah, it's... They've, they've got very little access points to that area of the map now. They are playing bot, they are trying to get farmed together, but the push is going to come through for Neon again. They could transition to Mega Creeps if you're not careful. Raging. And he yields up, Jing. Gonna try and go for an arrow set up and does land it into the turret. The ball goes. Gonna make it very, very short. They are still, though, going for those racks. They are exposed now, and Enryu almost chopping down Raging Potato just with one hit. Is eventually going to back away. Is OB Neon not looking to overextend? They didn't quite find the opening they wanted onto Raging Potato, and that's going to be enough for them. Of course, the main objective is going to be the next Roshan. And right now for SMG, well, they could have maybe found Avatar Mode had he actually swung before he got X back, but now he's gone. Charge is there though, are they really committing? It does seem like they are. Inkswell is out from raging into the nether strike and this whole bind even being committed, but who are they actually- Oh my Ooh, god! Oh my god! That's a lot of damage, John! That is a lot of damage! This moon is the third one to drop and that was one Tidebringer hit! Oh my god, look at the- look at the- click on Ninja Bogey, click in the death summary. It really was. 1.6k He's just gone. Ah, oh, we're trying to run away. The high ground's opened up, Mike. Two racks as they could take. Not gonna take long for a liking, even without the big creep helping him. Jink. Finding our food at boot, so OB Neon just feeling very powerful in this game, number one is. Well, that'll be the mid racks gone, and probably more for the top, as SMG will have no way to defend this. They could even go for the third. I mean, why the hell not? It, it just doesn't feel like they're in a position to stop them. On SMG and they may just charge in onto Enryu. He does have that wolf form up. Instead, they want to try and go after a Bing, but he doesn't even have the fiends rip up, so he doesn't have that much value right now. So it's just wanting to save from maybe the nightmare nightmare saves here from a Bing, but SMG. They kind of just force them back after two lanes of barracks and I think OB Neon again, the Pay for the next Roshan. 20 seconds win until Rosh is back up. They already bought back on Afu for SMG. They're not really finding much for it. Uh, they already lost the racks at that point. Tier 3 was still fairly well protected. Creep Wave's pretty far out. So I don't think it was completely necessary, but they do hold off on taking further losses in the team fight. And they do buy some time for themselves. Moon, he's working towards the Shivas next. He does have the gem to work against that Moonlight Shadow. But every time he jumps in, if the chain stun, if even one stun lands onto Moon, he's just gone. That Roche is up. Neon are already in the pit. They've got the Ag Shard there as well for Roche number two. And SMG just on the opposite side of the map. They, they don't have wards in the area. They, they can't even run up and fight. Roche on. is gone. Shards and Aegis to go the way of Avatar. The tidal wave is now available with CDR. Well, oh, I think he's been spotted taking that boundary rune, John. That is not good news. He does farm the Ancients. They're going to have a look around for him. He's going to make it in time. The blur TP is enough. However, line has been drawn out through the bot lane. So OB Neon does seem like they just want to go after that final lane of barracks and get those Megas up. And you see how far Avatar mode is in terms of net worth. I, I just don't think they can stop him anymore. He he's just way too far ahead. No, it's... It's really concerning when your Battle Fury PA has not Radiant caught up to a Kunkka uh, 31 minutes in. There's just not enough room for CDR to farm as much. He hasn't been finding as many kills as Avatar mode has been. He's been on a tear. 14-1-8. Just so much activity on the map for the Kunkka to play with. And only one rack standing for SMG to defend. Again, when it comes to high ground defense, SMG's hold isn't the best. I feel like they play a lot better outside 
with the potential of charge from Raging Potato. He does have the Ags up on that Spirit Breaker. So you do have some good work on kind of running through the BKBs, especially on Avatar mode, but we'll have to see if they find that angle, Mike. Well, they're going to try now. Radiant's They've even got that uh, the Thunderhide puff on Avatar. He's, he's attacking fast at the moment as the charge is there into the backside, but the Nightmare does save Enryu as the Soulbind has been expended, but Arrow does land on TSB and TDR. He is just melting. He lost three quarters of his HP in one hit from Avatar mode. It's just rough. It's too much. It may be time to call it, and there you go. Arfu's had enough. I mean, if you lose three quarters of your HP and you get broken by this Kunkka as a PA, you may as well just call it. Yeah, there's, it's a tough game for SMG. They just lost too much from the laning phase. Neon was just so aggressive. And we saw there was good rotations in able avatar mode. I mean, he had such a stable lane. He was working the CS well. You were getting some good denies on Moon. And as mentioned, you know, the small camp block did hold off from avatar mode, really snowballing too hard. But Jing was there. Like, they were finding all the arrows. They were finding all the angles to work the Mirana, to work the Kunkka. And Neon just started running from there. They just had better control. They had the chain stunts with X Arrow, Torrent Boat, uh, Blood Ride. SMG didn't have that kind of control. They had Inkswell Charge. That was it. Nothing to follow up. And I think that's what SMG will have to look for. They've got to play aggressive once more. We did see them try to make plays, but their lineup just couldn't match what Neon was bringing at the same time. Yeah, I mean, to, to compare, CDR got 6.6k hero damage this game. And uh, Avatar Mode got 25k, John. So a 19k <laughs> difference between those, uh, those calls is kind of insane. So we are going to head to a short 10-minute break. And of course, right after that break, we'll be back with Game 2 between SMG and OB Neon.